morning. Oh, good to see you. Mm. Yeah, it's been a been an interesting week since since last week's <laughs> since last week's episode. Um, feeling a little disorientated at the moment. <laughs> I'm not really. I'm not really too sure what's going on. Still some um, emotion coming up. I'm just noticing some sort of anxiousness in my chest right now. So yeah, we're just gonna we're just gonna see what happens. Um, we're just being here together as always. And yeah, it was actually the first time I thought, wow, I don't know, don't know whether I can do this today or not. Uh, and there were a lot of doubt, doubt thoughts going, up, going on with this seeming disorientation. Feels like a, a deeper time of trust. And um, I guess there's some resistance to that. that um, I want to hold on to a personal sense of self and I'm being pulled in another, in another direction. It feels like, so um, yeah, I haven't experienced this for a long time. In, just being quite unclear. <clears throat> so yeah, more, more trust required. And so um, through this, one of the lessons that was coming to my mind was, I do not perceive my own best interests. Um, yeah, it's a very, very powerful lesson for us all. Um, in there, he, he teaches us that we don't know our own best interests at all. I mean, really, he's, he's talking about the ego, that it hasn't got our own best interest at heart, even though we've been following along in that way for most of our lives. And to find that, no, that's not actually so helpful um, because we don't perceive our own best interests. And it feels very difficult to think, okay, particularly where I'm feeling now, it's like um, I must know what is best for me. Um, so whether that's meditation, relaxing, function, whatever, um, I can try and get myself out of how I'm feeling and maybe not actually asking for um, for an answer, for a real answer, because I'm seemingly perceiving a problem where there might not even be a problem. The only problem that I actually have is, is perception, how I'm seeing things. So it's like I'm using this, I'm using my perception, even though I'm told that that is um, not actually accurate, and then trying to solve the problem. <laughs> So uh, that's a difficulty in itself. When everything can seem, seem so real. And particularly if it's feelings, body things that, that we're very much associated with um, and so used to making decisions by ourselves um, in that area. I need some medication, I need to go to the doctor. I know what I'm feeling, how on earth is anything else gonna, gonna help me in this moment. Um, and yet again, it comes back to, well, this very, very important lesson. Maybe you're not perceiving your own best interests. And so it can feel very um, restraining to think like that. Um, so I just felt to actually read a little bit of that, of that section, I think it's, I think it's important. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's like one of those things that really we need to remember that we don't, don't know our own best interest and that's something that we can forget. So I'd like to read that to everyone. So if you wish, you can just close your eyes or whatever feels comfortable just so you can really take in these words. I do not perceive my own best interests. 
in no situation that arises do you realize the outcome that would make you happy. Therefore you have no guide to appreciate to appropriate action and no way of judging the result. What you do is determined by your perception of the situation and that perception is wrong. It is inevitable then that you will not serve your own best interests. Yet they are your only goal in any situation which is cor correctly perceived. Otherwise you will not recognize what they are. If you realized that you do not perceive your own best interests, you could be taught what they are. But in the presence of your conviction that you do know what they are, you cannot learn. The idea for today is a step towards opening your mind so that learning can begin. I do not perceive my own best interests. I'm just starting to settle back down again now. It feels better. Yeah, it's interesting that all this learning that, that we actually think that we know, and he says that you don't know, and then nothing can come in to help you learn what your best interests are. And actually, um, you don't know what's going to make you happy. And um, I guess really in, in, in life, I think that's what everyone's really looking for. Think about that in, in, in parenting and things. Most, most parents say they just want their children to be happy. But I find that quite interesting because then we're not really taught what that entails. There's no, okay, so I want to be happy. What makes me happy? And it's always seen to be in the form which then can be very difficult to actually find, find true happiness. <sighs> I've, um, I was just thinking of, you know, people travel, they travel around the world. I wanna, okay, I want, I'm, I'm gonna go and find myself. I'm gonna, I'm gonna travel around the world. And <laughs> I've had, um, I've known many people that have done that and had a really great time. But you come back, okay, what's next? I'm still, I'm still stuck here. I didn't perceive my own best interest. I thought doing all these wonderful things and seeing the world would make me happy and yet now I'm back here again. So yeah, just remembering that really it's just my thoughts about myself, about what I'm perceiving is my problem. And it doesn't really matter where I am what's going on around me. Um, yeah, that was actually one of the, one of the sections that I, that, that I found helpful with this, which um, the ego really doesn't like, as, as um, Jesus says in A Course in Miracles, is in the section um, self-concept versus self. And he puts it pretty clear on, on what we actually know because that's the problem with, with perceiving my own best interest. I think I know. And as I've been told quite a few times in my life, you are a bit of a know-it-all. So uh, this is probably a lesson for me. <laughs> so I'd just, like to, I'd just like to read this to you. Um, so this can really help us with, I do not perceive my own best interests. So this is going to get right to the point of, of what you do know. <clears throat> so again, whichever way you feel, you feel comfortable to really um, take these, these wonderful messages in for your healing, because this is, this is what we're here to do together, 
it's not really me talking about something, it's wanting an experience for yourself. That's why I'm sat here wanting this experience for myself too. So let's all, let's all join in an experience of remembering the truth. So self-concept versus self. The world can teach no images of you unless you want to learn them. There will come a time when images have all gone by and you will see you know not what you are. It is to this unsealed and open mind that truth returns unhindered and unbound. Where concepts of the self have been laid by is truth revealed exactly as it is. When every concept has been raised to doubt and question and been recognised as made no assumption that would stand the light, then is the truth left free to enter in its sanctuary. Clean and free of guilt. There is no statement that the world is more afraid to hear than this. I do not know the thing I am, and therefore do not know what I am doing, where I am, or how to look upon the world, or on myself. Yet in this learning is salvation born, and what you are will tell you of itself. Yes, yeah, so that pretty answers the, um, I do not perceive my own interests pretty, pretty clearly. I was just thinking about um, when I first came in and this disorientation that seems to be happening. Um, I seem, you go to a place, okay, it feels like something's going wrong. Well, no, you don't understand who you are, so you can't make that judgment. <laughs> You don't know what anything is for, so you can't make any judgments. I can't make any ju judgments. So anything that I'm judging that's, that's going on for me in this very moment is probably 99% wrong. Unless I'm actually really listening to the inner guide of what's right for me what's truly right for me. And so, as we kind of go into this a little bit more, somehow it feels, it feels more settling that I don't know. I really don't know my own best interests. And I really don't know what anything is for. And in that, the, the gift was is that once I lay aside all concepts of myself, what I think this world is, that the truth will reveal itself to me, that I'm not going to find it myself. It's actually wanting to find me, it's actually here now. <laughs> I'm, I'm choosing not to find it. <laughs> that's, the, that's, that's the problem. It's when I'm, when I'm fully ready to choose that, it will be revealed. There'll be no, <laughs> no concept of the self. I'm just, I'm, I'm just laughing because um, 
here on the camera we have, we have a picture of, picture of Jesus and as, and as we were setting up often we have pictures of our names so we can know what cameras are talking and um, Calico had her name up on the, on the sign she said oh you can, you can take that down I'm trying to let go of that concept you can put um, Jesus in, in the um, up against the, the camera so I can actually remember my, my true identity because of course that's, that's the problem believing that I'm a body believing that I'm talking into a camera right now is my very problem that's a, that's a perceptual problem that I have of cause and effect outside of me and the same maybe for you believing that someone is sitting in this chair talking back at you is another perceptual problem and just the um, the other lesson that came to me just as I went and sat and had some some quiet time was um, it can be but myself I crucify I thought that's interesting that 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 came in it's one of my favorite lessons and thinking about this if I think I'm perceiving my own best interests I'm actually I'm actually crucifying myself and I'm not not listening to what's best because of these such ingrained ideas that I know what's best for me and just remembering actually that that lesson I remember the first time I, I, I did it on my first round of the Course in Miracles and I was living in England at the time and no one's really into God you can't mention God or or Jesus or anything without you're mad really to think that that's ridiculous to believe in anything like that it's just not logical so I would do the same if someone spoke about God before that I would I would I wouldn't stick around to hear what they had to say and so it's very rare that you would hear anyone talking about God or anything and this one particular day I was very lucky where I lived because I lived by the beach in a long long promenade of about four miles long and um, it was one afternoon during the week where I worked very very quiet and I'm and I'm walking along and it was the first time I had this lesson it can be but myself I crucify wow I am doing this to myself it can be but myself I crucify wow it was just completely and utterly blowing my mind and I was really feeling like the energy just coming up it really resonated with me it can be but myself I crucify this is all my mind and it's this beautiful sunny day and so I'm just walking along the promenade and I'm doing that with all the conviction that I have just inside it can be but myself I crucify just looking out and the sun's like just in this corner here and I'm walking this way and it's just like beaming on me really feeling wonderful like it can be about myself I crucify I get it and with that it was in the afternoon of a day week so a weekday so wasn't really many people around other than this guy in the very very distance just coming walking towards me <laughs> and I'm walking along continuing to do this and slowly we're becoming closer together and, I, and I'm noticing him coming, coming towards me and he's got this march on and he's looking pretty happy he's in, he's, he's in a good stride he's enjoying himself and just as we get closer we're almost at the distance where we're, we're, we're side by side but he's, he's a bit more in front of me and he literally turns around he looks at me straight in the eyes and he goes Jesus loves you and he just continued walking past me and this rush of love just like, boom, oh, just like hit me in the heart. So, oh my God, that's never happened in God knows how many long I'd lived in England. No one mentioning that. Like, wow, oh, Jesus loves you. So, wow, thank you, thank you very much. It can be but myself, I crucify. Yeah, I just had to actually sit down. I sat down at the side of the promenade. Wow. 
wow, what a gift. I'm, I'm doing it all to myself. But in actual fact, I'm actually loved. And that's always what this really comes down to, doesn't it? To remember the real love, um, remembering who we really are, not this false identity that we're trying to maintain. Because ultimately that's, that's, that's the problem, isn't it? Consistently maintaining this self-body identity that we've believed so long and the ego has made that this world to believe all of this so it feels so so real and yet we have these experiences where something just jumps out of us Jesus loves you and that's not really it's not really a person that loves you it's it's a state of mind it's a remembering of what's beyond beyond me beyond beyond the body beyond the self a deeper knowing a deeper trust in truth. Yeah, so it feels like that's what this, this phase, seemingly, in my mind, is about, a, a deeper trust, so that's the prayer things seem to be coming up that I'm not um, fully understanding, <laughs> which he, he states as part of the process, so we can, we can trust that. And for me, um, I, had a, I had a joining with a, with a brother the other day and we just had a nice talk really, and Here at the moment, we're, we're talking about putting relationships first and, and being of service. And somehow that's like, wow, I, I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know how to do that. Something closes off in me. I think that's maybe where the, where the disorientation comes in. Or equally, it's like, I want to serve, but if I'm told seemingly from outside of me, it's time to serve, it's like, oh, actually, I'm not. I'm not feeling that. So I often have this, this conflict. As you can see, the, the perception, if it seemingly comes from the body identity, it, it feels like my choice. But if it's a seeming choice that's seemingly outside of me, um, I can set that up as a, as a grievance. I don't have to do what I'm told. That's pretty much my, my ego's favorite, favorite thing, well, you don't have to do it. <laughs> But really, it's what I'm, what I'm calling forth. I think actually that's what that's what Andy's going to be talking about. That really, it doesn't it doesn't matter what we do, it's actually how we do it. Where my mind is at in that service of to myself, the service to want to serve who I really am, and not to be caught up in believing that something's outside of me or something's against me, that's, that's, that's the grievance, something is really outside of me. And the inter interesting thing about this joining was the joining was, was a, um, a reaching out into love, a, a I want to I wanna come closer to you. And um, <clears throat> most of the time when that happens, there's a, a barrier that comes across and I can't really hear it. And um, <sighs> but this time it was like a voice came through and said, this is, this is okay, this is okay, and it helped some sort of filter come off because often I would say why? why? Why do you want to help me? But it's never really about that. It's like I'm blocking the truth of who I am and it's the love that I am reaching out to me through seemingly someone else. 
that I'm perceiving it as someone else. Therefore, why would you want to do that? But yet it's only my real reflection of myself coming back. The same as on the walk. It was my true reflection coming back to me. So maybe that can actually be a, be a prayer that we can all join in this week to look at where we're not taking in the fruits that are either coming seemingly from us or from outside of us. That there's a lot of, there's a lot of love that wants to be revealed and maybe we're, we're blocking that from someone even, even in the grievances that we, that, we sh that we have, there's always a call for love underneath it. And when that happens, you, you feel something much deeper, either with the seeming person or with yourself. So maybe this could be a good time to, to just, just, just think about that, if there is anything that, that maybe you need to go towards. Um, I think I need to go towards my brothers more. I think I, I very much try to do things on my own and there's like this belief, I'd rather suffer than, than join. <laughs> and Jesus says, actually you, you fear joining above, above many things. So I'd rather come to the point of suffering and I think that's what's, that's what's actually happened to me this week. I've actually tr been, tr the personal self has been trying to do things to get it right so I don't look like a failure. And the belief is, well, I'd rather suffer than be happy. I'd rather suffer than join. So I think that's gonna be uh, my prayer this week is to reach out. Um, and from my joining with my, with my brother, it was like, no, I think you, you need to ask for more help. And of course I can, I can look at when in conversations, people are too busy, whatever. Um, I can make up a story and say, well, that's what they said, so I can't reach out. And my brother pointed out, that's not talking about you, that you can't reach out. Maybe others are reaching out more when they don't need to, but that's definitely not your, not your, not your issue. So it's like I want to, I want to take that um, in, even though that feels, that feels difficult for me, to do that. So um, that's my prayer, and I join you in your, in your prayers of maybe something difficult is coming up. Maybe it's something from the past unresolved. Often you can feel it, you might, you might even feel it now. You might think, yeah, that I actually, I do need to take a look at that. To have a clear mind, could be anything, it could even be a bill. <laughs> that's nagging away in your mind that I know I need to look at it, whatever. Just to be, just to be clear, just to be peaceful. To not give away that peace, so. I guess this is my, my message to myself that I don't want to continue to, to give away the peace and want to continue to reach out if I do need help. <laughs> and really that's what, <laughs> that's what Jesus is teaching us through the course. There's really only one prayer, very simple, and that's help. And I think that kind of rounds up everything that, that we've been talking about. So that prayer will help with, I do not perceive my own best interests. Help. I do not know who I am. Help. <laughs> so that's kind of pretty simple. So I think we can, we can all remember that one and join in. If we don't know what to do, we can join in the help prayer and let something come through. So, yeah, thank you so much for, for being with me this week. Yeah, much love. <laughs>